Hey guys and welcome to another episode of Quick Expert Reviews. Today we've got a Sony Xperia 5, which considering the number games Sony's playing at, I'm not really sure how they position it. But anyways, we've got the fingerprint sensor on the side, the power button, the volume up, volume down. We've got the front facing camera, one speaker on top. We've got the SIM tray on the side, which also houses the memory card. Um, so you put the SIM and the memory card um, on one tray. There is no double SIM version in Europe or dual SIM. And then we've got a Type-C, a second speaker on the bottom, a second microphone on the bottom as well. And that is pretty much it. We've got also a triple lens camera setup, a color spectrum filter and... So, let's start with what we are running on. Now, Sony is known, renowned actually, for keeping up to date with software. So we are running on, obviously, Android 9. Um, however, it's been confirmed that it's going to receive Android 10 as well. And knowing Sony, we will get it sooner rather than, rather than later. Apart from that, well, let's have a look what we've got in here. We have the doo -doo 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 -doo. Xperia Assist. So you've got the Xperia tips if you want to know more about how to use the phone. Um, in yeah, so we, it, it's it's like a basically built-in manual. We've got the battery care, which as usual with Sony handsets, if you've got it turned on, it will try to prolong the battery life by, let's say you top up your, you charge your phone overnight and rather than overcharge it or rather than the, the, the phone itself will charge up to 90% overnight and then it will top up extra 10% um, an hour before you wake up, your alarm is set on. In terms of screen lock, you've got the pattern, pin, password, you've got the fingerprint sensor on the side, which doesn't, uh, which doesn't do double up as a power, power button. However, if you do touch it and hold your uh, finger, it will let the screen on. So it will screen, turn the screen on. However, it will not turn the screen off. Um, yeah, let's, let's make one up. Then we can also set the smart lock, which also allows us to then set up a trusted face. It doesn't work as fast as a dedicated fingerprint recognition software or hardware, like on the iPhones, Samsungs, or Huawei phones, but it still works pretty well. It's just a bit slow. In terms of lock screen preferences, there's quite a lot. So you've got the double tap to wake, obviously, uh, then you've got the, what have we got in here? You've got the lock screen message. So if you ever lose your phone or misplace it, someone finds it, you can put um, a secondary phone number. You've got the ambient display, which you can set to always on. Smart activation, which basically activates when you lift the phone. Um, you can even put a sticker on your display. You can even put a favorite photo if you'd like to. Um, on your ambient display so there's that and then you save it you've got some pre-installed and you can use your own gallery as well um, and as you can see it should come up in a second if you listen to spotify it will show you the album art um, and the current tune playing so it works really well um, if you want to use it demo mode will play a picture after picture from your set um, photos i would say don't set it up in demo mode because it does drain the uh, little battery on this handset apart from that let's have a look what we've got in here we've got 128 gig of internal storage expandable as you've seen via memory cards in terms of sounds we've got audio settings we've got dolby atmos atmos however it is custom built with sony so you've got a custom software which allows you um, to go to advanced settings and then if you'd like to you can adjust the Dolby Atmos to your liking in terms of music you can change from balance to like for example war or detailed warm in terms of movies you can uh, enhance the dialogue dynamic is just like an auto mode then you've got the tutorial as well and then we've got the custom which does allows us to 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 modify it to our liking and um, so to be honest 
a lot of phones nowadays boast they've got Dolby Atmos, but it's nice to see that you actually get a custom um, option on the Sony handset. Obviously, you do get the DSEHX, which um, also enhances the low quality and preview files to a higher quality. In terms of connection, we've got screen mirroring, casting, obviously a NFC, DualShock for native support and USB on the go connectivity in terms of network and internet. We also obviously have pocket hotspot and so on and so on. Then another feature known from Xperia 1 is the Game Enhancer, which not only allows us to record videos, but it also allows us to record the gameplay while the front-facing camera is on. It also tries to mute, um, if you'd like to, all the notifications, so you are uninterrupted. Then we've got the multi-window, which basically helps with on that 21 by 9 ratio screen and allows us to use two separate apps. But with that screen, it actually makes a lot more sense. Um, so, yeah, if you'd like to, you can use that, uh, which you can launch from either the main menu, like the press, press the multi-window icon, or you can use the edge screen. Um, apart from that, we've got the Cinema Pro, which kind of crashed on me. Interesting. So Cinema Pro, as in Xperia 1, I did a detailed video on Cinema Pro using Xperia 1. Um, however, I'm going to briefly show you what... Um, what, what you can change. So you can change the frames, you can change the lens you're using, you can change the resolution you're recording in, you can change uh, the look. Um, you can also set the ISO value, you can set the white balance, and so on, so on. On top of that, the phone does support Filmic Pro. Again, I did a separate video on that. Um, so if you'd like to, you can have a look into that. It's great addition because, to be honest, Filmic Pro is quite a powerful app, even more powerful than the Cinema Pro. So if you want to use a proper manual mode, like with the white balance, for example, you've got preset settings in Filmic Pro, you can use manual uh, white balance so you can adjust it to your liking. Then we can even adjust and use the focus points. You can even change the fo focus speed. You get focus markers, so there's quite a lot, to be honest. And it's brilliant that it works really well. Then we've got the screen grab, so while you're recording, you can also capture photos. Considering you, considering that you record in, let's say you record in 4K, that means that each photo will be an 8 megapixel um, photo. So that's a really nice addition. What have we got in here? Yeah, you've also got like a pre-installed um, video recorder, uh, video editor, but it's very basic. I would highly recommend using a power director or something. In terms of camera settings, we've got a predictive capture. You can turn it off or you can turn it on. So it will try and predict the movement and take four pictures. In terms of lens correction, you can set it to prioritize image quality or lens distortion, so correction for distortion. Side sense, you can use that to take pictures if you'd like to. And then we also have grid lines. Um, you can burst with camera key, which is on the side of the handset. Um, you've got smart launch, which to be honest, I always turn off because it accidentally turns the camera on and is absolutely useless. In terms of additional modes, we've got the manual mode, we've got the super slow mode, 960 frames per second, albeit a very, very short clip. In terms of manual mode, we've got the shutter speed, ISO exposure value and the white balance for the camera. And then we've got the HDR recording as well uh, for videos. We've got the portrait selfie and we can also use the portrait mode um, with the back camera. And it also works on objects. So it's not only human beings or dogs. It works on anything, which I'll show you at the very end of the video. You can also adjust the brightness and the color of the picture if you'd like to. And yeah, that is pretty much it in terms of camera itself. Now let's actually have a look at that glorious Super AMOLED, well, Super AMOLED OLED display, uh, which in my opinion, Sony makes one of the best panels um, in the world. I absolutely loved the one I had on the Xperia 1 and the Xperia 5, the one on the Xperia 5 isn't any worse than that. So yeah, really, really enjoyed watching content on that. 
And now let's actually have a listen to some tunes as well to see how loud are the actual speakers on the device. So overall, pretty decent handsets. Would that change anything? Yes, the battery life is a bit disappointing. One day um, isn't the greatest, but at least you get a fast charger in the box and it takes around an hour to fully charge it. So, yeah, if you've got any more questions, drop them in the comments. Have a great day, guys, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye!